Good afternoon. In this video, I'm going to uh, briefly deal with one part of uh, the uh, response back to me uh, from odd interviews, uh, a young man named Joshua. And uh, we'll see what he says here. I said, I'm going to keep this, try to keep each of these videos short. So long, he's put up a 50 minute video on this. So, but this is good. This, we'll go through this verse by verse. We'll go through the whole thing and see where, where, where he's coming from. And, uh, you know, uh, we'll deal with it and break it down. So let's, let's just start here. He's, re he's responding to my, my video, The Spirit of Dishonesty is Growing. Now, my point was is that they set up straw man arguments. The free grace, the, to attack the free grace movement, they set up straw man arguments. And uh, we define terms. And that's what I was referring to here. Uh, so we'll start here and see what, uh, what Joshua has to say. Uh, again, this is answering critics. Number one, is he only goes... This, one is, this video is only going to go about the six minutes because he's dealing with the 10, 10, 10, 13, Romans 10, 13, and 14. He met, I'm making a point that it's faith without works. And I said, repentance, we believe in repentance. Repentance of unbelief. See, that's the straw man they set up. We, they say we don't believe in repentance. He's now, he's now he's going to define his repentance more, more, uh, uh, more definitively by saying it's repentance having sorrow. That's not part of the salvation equation. You, the, the sorrow issue is not, doesn't have to be there. And uh, it's irrelevant. The issue is repenting of unbelief, changing mind of an unbelief, and then believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Now, what he's going to try to do here is try to show that the faith mentioned in 1014 isn't a saving faith, even though it has the gospel. It's talking about the rest of the passage, talking about the gospel, the preaching of, uh, of glad tidings. And so he wants, he's going to try to get out of that by uh, uh, just misrepresenting what uh, 10, 13, and 14 are we really talking about? A saved man. 10, 14 is talking about believing from a saved man because the next verses all talk about the gospel being presented. So let's go hear what he has to say here. Yo, Salvation Moment 17, Faith Alone. And in Ed, Ed Fenninger's uh, video, he was basically making the argument, he's a free grace proponent, he was making the argument... Now remember, there's two divisions in free grace. There's the uh, crossless gospel group, which is really kind of taking over the great free grace movement. The original free grace movement was started in order to refute Lordship Salvation. And there was a faith alone uh, viewpoint. And then what happened then is uh, Wilkin and Zane Hodge kind of took over the, uh, the group, and that's why a lot of people have kind of left the, the free grace movement, because uh, they have a crossless gospel, and they go to John and just say, well, if you claim the promises of John, that God, uh, Jesus Christ will give you eternal life, uh, there, that's what you need to do, and then you can believe in the, uh, the cross and resurrection later on as doctrinal issues. And don't... You cross this, but don't come on here and say, say they don't say that. It's exactly what they say. But we'll move on here. You meant that since we're saved by faith alone, therefore we cannot be saved by biblical repentance, which would be sorrow towards God over your... Ah, that's not biblical repentance. Biblical, in 2 second, in second, uh, Corinthians 7, that's talking about a saved person. That's a saved person uh, who uh, has a sorrow. Godly sorrow leadeth one to repentance. That is dealing with salvation in terms of getting saved from the sin to death. That's the context. This is not dealing with uh, biblical repentance. is simply a change of mind about faith and uh, turning from unbelief to belief. So he's already tried to say that the, uh, biblical repentance is, is, is sorrow. It is not sorrow. It is a change of mind about your, your unbelief to belief. And we cannot be saved by prayer to salvation because those are additions to faith. And since it's by faith alone, uh, therefore that can't be part of salvation. That's true. Prayer is a work. So if you add anything else on there except the repentance, unbelief, and faith, you've added something, you're doing something additional. Adding on a requirement like sorrow for sins, repentance of sins, promise to never do sins again, that's a work. If you, uh, if you add a prayer, uh, God, uh, you ask God to save you, that's a work. That's exactly right. So now we're getting down to define exactly where, each, where our positions are. And that's important in any argument, to define exactly where you stand without any, you know, uh, you know, misrepresenting what the other side is saying. So he's saying biblical repentance is godly soul. Okay, that is a work, that is not, that's not a requirement for salvation. But they assume that every time they see repentance, that's what they see. That's what they see. And in fact, repentance is simply a change of mind in the context of, uh, of, of uh, Acts 21.20. That is the idea that this repentance towards God is simply a change of unbelief to belief, and then faith in Christ. And so I pointed out in this video that the Bible never says we are saved by faith alone. It simply says we are saved by grace through faith without works. That's right. That's faith alone. 
So that's what I'm saying. Faith on here. We understand it's grace through faith. But the five souls are set up to count to another system, the Roman Catholic system, which is a work system. That's why you have the five souls. All the, five, all the souls are correct. And uh, you have to take them in context. So what uh, Brian Downing is saying, oh, it's, faith, it's not faith alone. It's never by faith alone because you have grace. Well, we're going to talk about it. We're talking about and there's no works. No works involved. And as he's defining the repentance of soul, uh, having soul, and the prayer, they all work. But we'll, we'll go on here now and see what he says about uh, the issue of faith. And I believe that. I affirm that we're saved through faith. We're also saved through prayer to God and through repentance. Okay, now we set up there. Now he's saying, he's saying repentance and prayer are part of salvation. Okay, now we, what do you have to do now? You've got to get out of those things that they're not, they're not works. That's what you've got to get. But he's now added repentance and prayer as part of the salvation requirement uh, along with faith. Those three things have to be there. Okay, and not technically three, there are two because prayer is part of faith, which we'll see in just a second. Um, but Ed Fenninger, he saw this video that I made against him, and so he decided to make a few comments on it, and, and in fact also a uh, video review. So we're going to review both the comments in the video. Basically in the video he's just uh, going over the comments with his own little comments that he makes in this video. So let's start his video called The Spirit of Dishonesty is Growing, published April 6, 2017. Response to Salvation Moment 17. So, let's go. Good afternoon. In this video, we deal with a young man who's been putting out a bunch of videos attacking the free grace movement. And to see, to show you how the, how the spirit of dishonesty gets in people. Uh, and how the attacks on faith alone, that's, that's the only way they can get it by uh, is, is to actually lie about what we're saying. And okay, notice I said with David Lyon what we're saying. I didn't say he was personally attacking me. He's going to make a claim that, I, that they take personally attacking me. I'm saying he, he attacked the movement. He was attacking what we were saying and that the, the doctrine and lying about faith alone. That's what Brian does with the issue of faith alone. No, it's not faith alone. It's, you know, it's uh, with grace and all this other nonsense. So I didn't say he personally attacked me and he'll, he'll claim that I said that. So uh, let's go on. And then, of course, uh, get away from the verses that disprove their position. Uh, and this is constant. Uh, so this is Salvation Moment, number 17, Faith Alone. And he's got a link uh, there with uh, one of my videos. Remember, this argument Faith Alone came up because Brian Denner was attacking the five souls, even though he uses uh, at least one of the souls to tour to say uh, salvation. I mean, uh, uh, the uh, scriptures alone. So uh, we're going back and forth on here. Uh, my initial comment was faith alone means without works, Romans, 10, Romans 4 or 5. Not of, of works, uh, not of works. Uh, repentance of sins and sinners prayer are works. We don't say that men aren't supposed to repent. Repentance is a change of mind and is part of faith. And then regarding the, the uh, Romans 10, 13, which he keeps citing, read uh, Romans 14, which says you can't call upon the Lord unless you have believed. And uh, he also has a video on uh, uh, the uh, call upon the name of the Lord. He, he deals with Robert Breaker. And uh, uh, I'll deal with that as, as well. But the point is, he, he won't deal with Romans 14, 10, 14. So let me go here and... Uh, uh, All right, so just to respond to some of his comments here. He says, well, Romans 10, 14, and he also says, by the way, um, you can rewind this tape back, that, well, uh, he lies about me. Joshua lies about me. No, I don't lie. I never said he would lie about me. So remember that. I said he's lying about the free grace movement. And I see particularly Joshua said so that's what these guys do. Uh, you know, basically what it is is an attack on what the free grace movement is, is, is preaching who believe, believe in faith alone. I never said he personally, he was dealing with me personally. So you can be winding the tape and, and listen. I never said it was about me. I said it was about the movement. They attacked the, the, what, we, what we believe who, who are advocating faith alone. And then they make up stuff and then, then they use storm and arguments about him and I'm not representing misrepresenting him at all but you're representing you misrepresenting what faith alone stands for which is that without works but now we're getting we're getting down to exactly what it is because you were saying we didn't believe in repentance we do believe in repentance we just don't believe in your definition of repentance going on with 10 Romans 10 14 he says Romans 10 14 shows that you can't call upon the Lord unless you believed and therefore since you believed and whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life Safe people call upon the name of the Lord. That's basically the gist of his argument. Very true. You have to be safe to call, on, call upon the name of the Lord. God only hears safe people when they call upon the name of the Lord. And that's what he's talking about. 
Well, there's a little fact that disproves that. Let's go here to the main verses. Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 14, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And so Ed Fenninger picks up on that phrase, and, they, and he says, Well, uh, since you have to believe first, because it says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed, implying that you believe in Christ first, and then you call on him, and since we're saved by believing in Christ, we're saved before we call on him. Even though the verse says in verse 13, Whoever... Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. See now, rather than deal with the with the, the possibility that the issue of saved is different, what are they being saved from? This is an eternal salvation being talked about. And if you if you go to the uh, Joel two thirty two, that's, it's not eternal salvation; it's physical salvation. They don't want to deal with that. They keep going. Now he wants to go with the issue that he's still dealing with eternal salvation, which it isn't. It's dealing with temporal salvation. As a Christian, you call upon the name of the Lord to be helped in your life. When Peter was drowning, he called upon the Lord to save him, and the Lord picked him out of the water. That is the, the things you can call upon the name of the Lord to be saved from in time. That's what 1013 is referring to, and that, that, was, a, that was how the Jews would understand it, that, that Jesus Christ was going to save them from temporal destruction. It doesn't say whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord is saved or is doing it because they're saved. No, they aren't saved yet. No, they're saved. That's the point 1014 makes. They are saved. But they're not calling on to be saved eternally. They're being called to be saved on something from temple danger, from some temple danger, to be helped in some time of crisis in your, time, in, in your life. And that's where you, call, you pray to God to help you in those situations. But the best answer to this uh, objection how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed, is that this belief in context of Romans 10, 14 is not the same belief that's in Acts 16.30. Acts 16.30 says, uh, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. To believe on Christ basically means, in English, to trust him, to rely that on him and to trust in his shed blood to save you from your sins. That's true, and that's why it's Acts 16.31 also it says that's what we have to do is believe. That's faith alone. That's saving faith. That's the faith that saves a man. That's right. No prayer. No prayer. He, they, they, Paul didn't say pray to be saved. He said believe and be saved. Trusting in the shed blood of Jesus Christ to save you from your sins. Amen. All right. But that's not the faith here in verse 14. How do I know that? Look back at verse 9, the context. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. This is not faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ to save you. It's simply belief in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. It's simply belief that of the fact that, okay, Jesus was risen from the dead, that he died, and that he rose again from the dead. That's right. That's why I say there's no salvation in, in Romans 10. He just put over my point. There's no blood. That's what he's going to point out here. There's no blood here. And that's why the people won't run to Romans 10, 9, 10, and 10, 13, there's no blood. And so he's making a very argument. I said that 10, 9, 10 have nothing to do with anyone's salvation, anyone, because there's no blood. The very argument I made about that, you can't get saved, Romans 10, 9, 10, 10, 13, which is where the Romans road always leads you, you can't be saved with that. So he's making the very point we're making. Paul was telling the Jews that's what they had to do because they had to, they could, they had, they, their, their issue was recognizing the deity of Jesus Christ and recognize his resurrection. You don't believe that? Go to Peter, uh, in, uh, Acts 2, what Peter was talking about, the resurrection, and then in Acts 13, what, uh, what Paul talks about, the resurrection. He puts in the aspect of justification from sin in, in uh, uh, Acts 13. But he makes the point, he keeps pointing out that Jesus Christ is the, the risen Messiah and, the, and part of the Davidic covenant. That was the part the Jews could not accept. They understood the blood issue from sacrifices, but they could not understand the fact that Jesus Christ was God, who he claimed to be God, he said he was God, and the fact that he, was, he rose from the dead in, 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 uh, in, in the answer to, he was the, he was the fulfillment of that Davidic, Abrahamic Davidic covenant. That's all it is. This is not saving faith. It's Amen. That is not saving faith. Romans 10, 9, 10 on it. Either is Romans 10, 13. But you'll see when we get to Romans 10, 14, we start talking about the gospel. This isn't faith in Christ to save you. This is simply acknowledging the facts about Jesus' death and resurrection. And that's the same belief in verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? It's referring to believing in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, which is not what saves you. What saves you is 
trusting in that death and resurrection to actually save you. Okay? So Romans 10, thir uh, 14 doesn't pose any kind of problems. It doesn't imply that anyone is saved before they call on the name of the Lord. It simply implies that they must believe, men must believe, that God raised Jesus from the dead before they can ask him to save them, and then they shall be saved. What? <laughs> no. Read the rest of the verse. It's talking about what the gospel is talking about, 10, 14. How, shall they, how, how then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? How then shall they believe in him who, whom they have not heard? How, they, how, how, how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? And it is written, how beautiful the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. There's the gospel. Okay? So you have to be saved before you get to Romans 10, 13. That's what Paul is saying. And that's what they were rejecting. For, who, uh, for they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by healing and healing by the word of God. So he's talking to the Jews and saying, you guys need to get saved. And the fact is, is that the, uh, uh, he's making that point out that the, the, their problem, the Jewish problems, had an issue of faith. And that's how they got saved. They, and he's, that, that's the constant issue he's making an issue in Romans, Romans 10. And you can't uh, uh, save people call upon the name of the Lord, not on save people. But going on with uh, Ed Feninger's video, let's go back to the comments here. Okay. Um, see what he's, uh, he says here. Let's stop right there because uh, I want to get into a, into a new topic. But that'd be, uh, the point is, now he's just saying that anybody believes, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't even make any sense. The fact, the fact of the matter is, is that Paul put, so let's talk about the gospel talks about the gospel, he says, a good thing, uh, uh, bring glad tidings of good things. That's the gospel. And they haven't believed it. Their issue was a faith issue. But when they start, people start bringing you to Romans 10, 13 to get saved, that's not the issue of being t saved in 10, 13. Paul was talking to the Jews in Romans 10 about their problem with faith. That's another thing, well, I guess he's going to bring up an issue with the Gentiles in Romans 10. The Gentiles are discussed along, as, as uh, 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 an issue with the Jews. Not directly to, you're not speaking directly to the Gentiles. But uh, again, I'll stop here to make this, these videos relatively short, since this is, uh, this is obviously a long, it's 50 minutes. I, I want to go through it. I want to go through it. Because this is how you nail this stuff down. But remember he said that. This is not, he's not talking about saving faith in Romans 10. He even said that. Romans 10, 9, and 10. It's not talking about saving faith. But where will Romans road bring it? Romans 10, 9, and 10. Where will, where will they bring it? Romans 10, 13. So he said that there's no blood there. So you can't be saved with that. Then, 1014, Paul, Paul starts talking about the gospel and the issue of that they have to believe the gospel. And that gospel does include a blood, a blood atonement, which Paul mentions in Romans, uh, in Acts 13. So the point is that the people bring you to Romans after getting you, getting, ignoring Romans 3, then they bring you to Romans 10. And just say, well, just well, uh, and, and have the uh, deity of Christ and have the resurrection. You won't get saved with that. You got to have a blood issue in there. And Romans ten thirteen again is not the uh, Romans ten fourteen is saying they have to believe. They have to be. They have to be saved. They have to be saved, and they they have to believe in the blood atonement. They would be saved. And so the idea that you're going to pray in order to get saved is a work. You're not told to pray. So using this ten thirteen is just. Uh, it's just silliness, and uh, it, it violates. Now he's just he's trying to, you know, ten thirteen is the issue of dealing with the Jews and their problem, their faith problem. It goes back to Joel two thirty two, just like it's it's repeated. It, it, it's uh, in Acts two, the Jews were going down. This was they, they were closing out that that period as they were get, going on to a wrath period for rejecting the gospel. And Paul is trying to reach them. Acts actually Acts fourteen talks about he reached many Jews and Gentiles. But the point is, Acts 13, what's the issue? The issue is, he's pointing out to them the same thing, he repeats the same thing that Stephen says in Acts uh, uh, 7, and the Peter's repeating in Acts 2, same or the same thing. And they're constantly, the Jews reject it, reject it, they reject it, they reject faith. But Christians have no business running into Romans 10, because you can't find that blood for salvation. That's, he just admitted that. And 1014 is believing. He says, you know, they, they were going on the fact that they, were, they, they have to believe. They have to believe in the Jesus Christ as God and the resurrection. And in order to be saved, they got to believe in the blood. That's exactly right. They had to believe in the blood. But the point was, he's making that issue there. Their problem 
their obstacle was one was was the fact that Jesus Christ was God and the fact that he was he was risen from the dead uh, and the uh, therefore he fulfilled the covenants of uh, Abraham and David. That was their initial problem. And but then he goes on to talk about they refused to believe the gospel, the glad tidings. That was their issue. So we'll go. On, I'll continue on with the next video dealing uh, with uh, some of his comments. Amen. Thank you.